Module 3. Whistle, Signal and Verbals. Whenever you blow your whistle to stop the game, you must ensure that you follow a process. Otherwise, the players and spectators won't know what's going on. And that's what leads to confusion and frustration setting in, which in turn leads to referee abuse. The communication mode is a two-step sequential process. Step one, blow your whistle and perform a primary signal first and then give a verbal instruction along with the secondary signal second. Your whistle and primary signal gets the players to stop and look at you. Your verbals and secondary signal delivers your decision to them and also to the crowd and the spectators. The whistle. The most effective and recommended whistle is an Acme Thunderer. There are two types, the wide mouth and the narrow. There are two ways to blow the whistle. Long and loud, like this. Short and sharp, like this. The long and loud whistle is used when you award a penalty kick. When you award a free kick. When you award a try and a penalty try, and when you start each half. You also use it when you stop the game for an injury. The short and sharp whistle is used when you award a scrum. The verbal and secondary signal is used during the delivery of your decision. For example, you may have blown a short sharp whistle to award a scrum and the delivery of your decision has a verbal instruction such as knock on blue, scrum, red ball and you also perform a secondary signal and in this particular instance the secondary signal for a knock on is your arm outstretched with an open hand above your head and move it backwards and forwards to indicate the ball has been knocked on. Secondary signals. The most important secondary signal is the advantage signal, with your arm outstretched waist high towards the non-offending team for a period of approximately 5 seconds. This brings us to the end of Module 3. Please now take a moment to complete the assessment on page 12 of your workbook. Coming up Module 4, Where Do I Stand?